3D printers are really cool devices and they allow you to do a lot with them. I actually got this longer LK4 off of Amazon for 150 bucks. So let's put this together and keep in mind that this is mostly pre-assembled so there's not much to do. But let's get into it. <laughs> So the entire build is going to be put together on top of the main frame which houses the power supply, the heating bed, and other components. The very first thing you want to do is make sure the power supply voltage matches the voltage of your region. Since I'm in North America, I put it to 115 volts. You can now get the x-axis beam and the gantry and slide the x-axis beam like so. Make sure the wires coming off the beam doesn't interfere with other components like say the heating bed. You can now get the Z-axis motor and coupler and screw it to the gantry using the M4x16 screws. After that you can get the threaded rod and thread it through this threaded hole at the top and screw it in until it goes inside the motor coupler. Now to tighten this threaded rod you can use the appropriate wrench to tighten the grip screws on the motor, which locks the threaded rod in. Now our gantry is complete. Now we can position it right above these holes on the mainframe and screw it in from the bottom using the M5 by 20 screws. Now you can whip out the Z-axis limiter switch and screw it to the side of the gantry, and it actually incidentally happens to be right next to the motor. This switch ensures that the X-axis beam doesn't go below a certain point. Make sure that when the X-axis beam activates the switch that the nozzle is a hair away from the heating bed. Next, to hold the filament, there's this filament holder that we can screw to the top, which is pretty straightforward as it uses uh, T-nuts. Oh, looky here, we have a touchscreen LCD panel. You can turn this over and unscrew its screws, and then plug in the shielded MyPi cable by lifting the buckle, putting the cable all the way in so the contacts make proper contact, and closing the buckle. Then you can screw the back panel on to protect the electronics. After that, you can get these two M5 by 6 screws and use them to screw the LCD panel to the main frame. Then it's just a case of plugging in the cable for the Z-axis switch, this is labeled with a Z, the cable for the heating bed, which is the biggest of the bunch, the cable for the filament detection, this is labeled with an E, the cable for the extruder, also labeled with an E, the cable for the Z-axis motor, labeled with a Z, the cable for the X-axis switch, labeled with an X, and the cable for the x-axis motor, also labeled with an X. Another thing you want to make sure is that your heating bed is completely level. It should already be pre-leveled since this is uh, mostly pre-assembled, but if it isn't, there are these screws underneath it. And if you want to raise one corner, you just loosen it. And if you want to uh, bring it down, you tighten it. Same thing with uh, all corners. And the way you can check its level is to move this uh, the y-axis from one side to the other and moving this to one corner to the other and you can check whether um, it's the same distance from the heating bed which should be about like a hair's uh, worth of distance because that's how you're going to get the best print quality. Another thing to mention is that you're probably going to have to consult the manual that came with it because there's probably something that I missed in this video um, that uh, is in the manual. So you're probably going to have to consult that. Another thing to mention is how to actually insert your filament. So here I have a uh, PLA filament. This is actually like a kilogram or something. So it's a lot of filament. And the way you can feed it into your machine is to just insert it uh, into that hole right there. I don't know if you can see it, uh, but there is a hole right there. And you can just insert the PLA filament or whatever filament you have uh, in that hole. And then the filament detector will detect it. And then when you boot it up, it should allow you to extrude some filament. As you can see, there's a gear right here that'll push the filament all the way through this a uh, little pipe to the nozzle. Once you plug it in, you can just, there, you can see there's a little switch here on the back that you can just flip on like that. And things should start booting up. As you can see, the LCD panel boots up and here you can control uh, things like uh, the, the Y axis. As you can see, it starts moving. Uh, the x-axis, etc, etc. You can figure it out on your own, obviously. There's also files, as you can see, there's some already included on the SD card, which I have inserted back here. Um, so it's really cool that they in include the SD card so it can operate like an independent machine uh, and not rely on a computer. Now, speaking of your computer, you can use this little USB to SD card 
uh, adapter if your uh, computer doesn't already have an SD card reader, which is pretty useful and really cool that they included that. Another cool little feature here is extrude, and here you can just extrude your filament if you need it, so like if you want to insert new filament and things like that, and you can also control the temperature and whatnot. Then there's also preheating, this you can use, um, there's, as you can see, there's different presets, PLA, ABS, and PETG, uh, and here you can also control your temperature, um, and you can also do auto. Uh, by clicking on it and it'll automatically set the temperature so for pla i believe it's like 200 degrees uh, maybe for abs too i'm not sure because i've never used abs with this then under more you can see there's leveling there's settings um, under leveling you can as you can see you can move it to all the corners see if it's all lined up as i mentioned before you could do it manually obviously now a quick few things to mention um, one is that it does have a cooling fan which has a bracket attached so that it directs all that air um, to the 3D print as soon as it touches the heating bed. Another thing to mention is that the power supply when turned on is super super whiny so that is one thing to consider but for the 3D printer it should be fine. Now the last thing I want to talk about is how to actually use the 3D printer like you have it all set up how do you actually use it. Now the first thing you want to do is actually make your 3D print so go into a software like SketchUp or a, another software if you prefer it that way and then you can import that file into a software like Cura and then slice it into G-code. And basically all that means is transform that 3D print file, usually it's STL, um, into G-code, which is uh, what most 3D printers can understand. Then you can save all that G-code to your SD card and then insert it into the back of the 3D printer. And then you can just go into uh, the LCD panel, files, and then click on the file, open it. It'll ask you if you wanna print it, you say yes, and it'll start printing. Pretty cool stuff that can work independently of a computer. So thank you so much for watching. If you didn't like this video, you can hit dislike, but if you liked it, hit like, and maybe consider getting subscribed so you don't miss out on tech content like this. Uh, but other than that, I will see you in the next video.